was revealed in giving his son Christ who was our sin offering. He became sin who knew no sin so that we might become the righteousness of God. The greatest demonstration of love is this, that a man would lay his life down for a friend. And so we understand and we have received God's love when we receive Jesus Christ in his work. But that love must not just stay in a place of, of receiving. It must now be channeled as a vessel through to those who still need to know and hear and receive. And Paul made this great statement, the love of Christ compels me. It's like it's got a hold of me and it's motivating me to go, I can't help myself. Because I've been changed by this love. And now everyone that I see, I'm going to see them changed by this love. Whoever wrote that song, Hosanna. Heal my heart. Make it pure. Open up my eyes to the things that see. Break my heart for what breaks yours. Those are the, all the, the telltale signs of someone who has experienced the love of Jesus and is beginning to compel them or arrest them or constrain them to do something. They, they can't help themselves. they got to reach out in love and touch people who so desperately need this love. The love, of, the love of Christ compels me. And so I ask you again today in, in, in uh, the words of this song, when was the last time your heart was broken? For what breaks Jesus' heart? Matthew 9, the end of the chapter. It says this, that Jesus, he lifted his eyes and, and he saw a multitude of people. I mean, ever, wherever he went, there were crowds gathering. And it says his heart was moved with compassion. Someone has defined compassion as love in action. It's not just an emotional stirring that gets you teary-eyed, but you do nothing about it. True compassion will, will compel you, will move you into action to do something to change you. And it says Jesus was moved with compassion because he saw this, this multitude like, like sheep that had no shepherd and they were, they were harassed and helpless and hungry and, and he wanted to do something so he, he brought them and it says and he, he touched all those who were sick and he healed all those of diseases and, and he out of his love for them ministered life and changed their circumstances. Break my heart with what breaks your heart. Paul says, I, the love of Christ compels me. And when you understand this, that when you have a desire to please God, knowing that you're going to stand before Him, that, and, and that there is a love that you've experienced that overwhelms us, then we need to take that and, 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 and cause it to propel us to go with, as he describes now, with this ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation. I mean, we've got all the equipment we need. To go in and see people change. I stated last week in the conclusion of the message what would happen if every one of us just got a hold of this? And I challenge you with this just win one person this year. I'm not talking about holding a crusade with 50,000 people and seeing 8,000 people come to the altar and. and I'm talking about taking the next year and winning one person to Jesus. Start loving on them. Let your heart be broken with compassion for them because you see them as they truly are. And if they're not saved, if they're not born again, if they're not receiving Jesus' love, then they're harassed and they're spiritually dead and they're helpless and they're probably bound and they're starving spiritually. And you can do something to change that. Work on that one person for one year. Bring them to Jesus. In one year, this church will double. In every one of us, just one one. It's not rocket science. What this world needs is a church that's going to take these words seriously. You want revival? 
sitting back and just hoping for Holy Ghost goosebumps? Woo <laughs> hoo! You want change? God, help me every day to plant my feet and start my day with these truths at the forefront of my mind and motivating my heart. I want to please you today. Pleasing you, I'm going to fulfill my call of being a witness, living proof. Understanding that all I do, how I do it, I'm going to have to give an account to you and so help your love to so fill my heart and fill my life that it compels me, it pushes me, it constrains me to reach out in very practical ways through my life and through my lips to communicate this ministry of reconciliation that simply is bringing people who are separate from God and bringing them into relationship with God. Help me use the words of reconciliation that you've given us so that people will, will understand and know who you are. Paul said, I, I implore you, be reconciled to God. There's the heart of the message that we need to bring to people. His love for them motivates my heart of love for them. And I simply want to bring them to Jesus. If we got a hold of this church, if we really got a hold of this, not waited for preachers only in the pulpit or televangelists on the television. <laughs> but every one of us grabbed a hold of this. My call is to be a witness. My motive is to please him. My motivation <clears throat> is to love people in the kingdom that compels me. And just make it your make it goal. I'm going to work on one person this year, Pastor Larry. Just one. Neighbor Frank. Cousin Susie. Boss Billy Bob. Pick somebody. Just start loving on them. Living proof as to the reality of who Jesus is and what he can do. And win them into the kingdom one person at a time this year. We'll be sitting here this time next year, and there won't be too many empty chairs. And in two years, we'll have to go to two services. And in three years, there'll be like a thousand people. And if all of them are doing it, just do the math. We'll take over Bradford. That's the way Jesus intended it to be. 120 people in an upper room got infused with power to be witnesses. And in Acts chapter 17, it says of them, those are the people that have turned the world upside down. They spread it around the Roman kingdom at the time. Started with 120. I think we got that many. Hello? Hello?